A man called Josiah Zayner has become the first to experiment on himself using gene doping to potentially give himself super strength. No, really. So this might sound like science fiction, but it's true. It seems that the era of transhumanism is just around the corner. So this ex-NASA biochemist basically used a technique called CRISPR-Cas9 to modify his own DNA, potentially making himself much stronger. So CRISPR is a technique that allows scientists and researchers to relatively cheaply and inaffordably alter their own DNA. It can find target sites in the genome, slice it, and then make edits, delete specific parts or insert new information. He's knocked out a gene that causes the production of myostatin. Myostatin is a molecule that breaks down muscle mass. And if we can block myostatin, we know that this results in increased muscle and somewhere up to 30% potentially. Knockout mice have had this gene doping technique done to them and they see a massive increase in muscle mass with no noticeable side effects. You can see in photos they go from being relatively skinny normal mice to super mice like Mighty Mouse. Likewise, you can breed the myostatin gene out of dogs and bulls and this has been done to result in huge muscular looking animals. And what's really interesting is that this mutation appears to occur naturally in certain individuals. So a baby was born several years ago now, probably 10 years ago, who had this natural mutation and was just this really strong looking baby that could perform the Iron Cross, had huge calves, the photos looked insane. It's been suggested that you can get a lesser version of this mutation and that some athletes might actually be walking around that mutation right now. One example being Flex Wheeler. He's often suggested to be someone who might have this mutation naturally. I don't know why Flex of all the bodybuilders, but yeah, that's a thing. So if you're somebody who gains muscle very easily, doesn't lose it easily, then maybe you've got some kind of mutation that's helping you along the way. I find this really interesting actually, because whilst this specific mutation is incredibly rare, when you think about the complexity of your DNA, the chances of one of your pieces of code being slightly different is actually not that far-fetched. You might be walking around with some kind of low-key superpower and not even know it. We're all so different and that's why you should never judge someone, you know, for finding it hard to gain weight or for finding it easy to lose weight because they might have a literally different genome to you. They might be so different. The way that we think might be so different. I just find it interesting. It's great that we're all so different. So yeah, the point is that this mutation blocking myostatin could result in extra strength extra muscle with no noticeable side effects. There are no side effects noted in this baby child who had the mutation either. And that's what uh, Josiah was interested in, what he wanted to demonstrate, and he wanted to show how now CRISPR makes it easy for anyone with a basic understanding of biochemistry and some basic equipment to perform self-gene therapy and to make changes to their own body. And he believes that we should all be entitled to make these changes to our own DNA, to express ourselves, to become the person we really want to be, to direct our own evolution. And that's what this was all about. So he says it's too early to see any results at this point of the experiment, and that was never the point anyways. I mean, it was only in his forearm, it would have only affected the surrounding area. But his point was to demonstrate this is something that anyone can do, and in his opinion, that anyone should be able to do. I just want to say right now that I'm not recommending that you run out there and find a dodgy scientist who can do this for you. There are definitely risks associated. There's a chance of um, insertional mutagenesis, so it basically means the cell goes bad. It could potentially cause cancer or other issues if you delete the wrong gene or overwrite an important gene, and it's just not a very good idea. We don't know the long-term effects at all, and most of us don't have the techniques or the science or the knowledge to be able to do this, so I'm not saying this is something available, I'm not saying it's something you should do. I'm just saying it's really interesting. What I want to know is whether you think this is a good thing or a bad thing. So this falls under the category of transhumanism. Transhumanism is discussing any technology being used to increase our abilities um, better than well. So instead of using medical techniques in order to cure disease or fix problems, it's using them to make us faster, stronger, smarter, more resilient to disease, to give us thicker skins that won't burn as easily. And there are those out there that think this is a fantastic idea, that it gives us more freedom to be whoever we want to be, to advance civilization by making us smarter so we can invent greater things to move us towards the singularity, to explore space without worrying about the effects of gravity or cosmic rays. There are lots of potential benefits. It could even have um, benefits for the planet by making us more energy efficient, by making us need less food. All these things. And of course, as someone who's interested in improving themselves, I'm just like the idea of being able to run super fast, jump super high and punch really hard and think smart. 
However, there are also people that think transhumanism is a very bad idea, that it will increase the class divide, because if some people can afford these technologies to make themselves smarter and faster and stronger, and others can't, then of course that's going to create a lot of issues. Likewise, there are people that say it's cheating. I mean, if I've put all this work into the, at the gym to get super strong, and then some guy comes along and injects himself and is super strong, 30% more muscle mass with no effort, then am I going to be happy about that? But that, is that just my issue? And then should these people be allowed to compete in the Olympics? There's no way of tracing uh, gene modification. And the blurry line, the confusion here is that if someone already could have this mutation naturally, then wouldn't giving yourself that mutation be simply levelling the playing field? Where do you draw the line? And isn't using some kind of shoe that springs you along actually a form of transhumanism? Is transhumanism anything that's permanent or do you count something like caffeine or certainly nootropics? Where do you draw that line? Are um, contact lenses an example of transhumanism? Or is plastic surgery? It's a really interesting, complicated topic. I did my dissertation on this actually, on the ethics of transhumanism. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that down below. I'm not 100% sure where I stand on it. I think any technology we introduce has a tendency to cause trouble, make things worse for a while, and then as we get used to it, it makes things better. That's not a comment on whether we should do it or not. It's certainly something that needs to be handled with a lot of care and caution. My conclusion of that study, by the way, was that we shouldn't use a blanket term transhumanism and ban transhumanism or allow it, but rather look at the specific categories within it. We should create categories of different types of transhumanism and different transhuman technologies. And Zane is not the only example of a guy out there already using transhuman technologies. Biohack.me is a website where people discuss this sort of thing and techniques they can use today to improve themselves. So one of the most popular techniques on there is inserting a small magnet into their fingertips where they have lots of nerve endings and then this vibrates when they pass through um, magnetic fields and electromagnetic fields and this allows them to sense them, to sense microwaves for example and this basically gives them a whole additional sense on top of their regular senses. Pretty exciting stuff, not something I would do because A I'm squeamish, B a lot of people get uh, infections doing it and see, I need my finger. I, I type on the computer for a living and I lift weights. So I wouldn't be able to do either of those things with an uncomfortable magnet moving around in there. But again, it's certainly very interesting. Another guy called Kevin Warwick actually inserted an electrode array into his spine and could use this to move a robotic arm remotely and even to communicate with his wife. Pretty crazy stuff. So yeah, for now, these transhuman technologies are still very much in their infancy. They're not available and it's more just something that we need to start thinking about and discussing. And that's what this video is about. But maybe you're wondering, and I know you are, if there's a way that you can reduce your myostatin production naturally. And I'll go into this in the future in more detail perhaps, but for now, basically, myostatin production is linked with cortisol and low blood sugar, so you want to stay as anabolic as possible if you want to reduce your myostatin production. Avoid really low blood sugar, avoid exerting yourself overly, avoid stress, and you'll also avoid myostatin. There are products out there that claim they can block myostatin. Most of these involve increasing folostatin, which is naturally um, antagonistic to myostatin, but none of them are backed by studies. Most of them are scams. They tend to be very expensive, only available online. My recommendation is to stay clear of those. But if you do try one, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments down below. There is research being done into antibodies that could block myostatin production, so maybe that will be available in future. And more recent research has shown that Epicatechin can also block myostatin production. Epicatechin being a substance that's available in dark chocolate. I've talked about dark chocolate before and how it has tons of benefits for vasodilation and all kinds of other stuff for brain power. So if you're interested in blocking myostatin, then you could try switching from uh, white chocolate to dark chocolate or making dark chocolate your daily snack because it's got lots of health benefits and it's not expensive. There's no downside if it doesn't do anything for you. And that's what I do. But so yeah, there you have it. Gene doping is upon us, transhumanism is upon us, and myostatin is an interesting avenue to pursue if you want to build more muscle. Hope you found this video useful and interesting guys, if you did then please leave a like, please share it around, please comment down below, these things all help me greatly and I massively appreciate it. Uh, if you found this interesting then stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, I've got more on the way on brain training, bodybuilding, fitness, uh, martial arts, productivity, nootropics, all the usual stuff, if that sounds good, then thanks a ton for watching, and bye for now. I'm Oil Can Harry, and I'm bad. Mighty Mouse spoils everything. Oh, he makes me mad.